is a star that lights the road I'll take this ride And just drive I wanna be the only one to make it to the light I'll take it to the edge of the road Maybe I could be the one Riding to the setting sun In 1981, tales began to grow and grow about this Brazilian kid who was uh, dominating the Formula Ford season. People covering that series were sort of starting to say this kid really is something special. And Senna challenging for that second place, and he's taken it. A magnificent bit of driving by Senna, who's now in second place. There was something otherworldly about him, not just in his driving, but in his voice, in his, in his, in his manner, in, in his whole being. He was a remarkably relentless character, probably more so than any other racing driver I've ever come across. This certainly made him the driver he was to a great degree, and I think it, it was probably, it was maybe his greatest strength, and, but in, in one way, uh, also perhaps a weakness. It will have pleased him more than anything else, I think, that he's beaten his arch-rival, Alain Prost. The Senna Prost rivalry was like no other I've ever known. There were suggestions of a feud between Damon Hill and, and, and Michael Schumacher. Nothing, nothing comes close to, uh, to, to how Senna and Prost were. The problem with them was not that they were so different, but in fact they were so alike, fundamentally. They were very different in the way they went about their, their, uh, their racing. You watch Prost in a Formula One car and you would believe you could do it yourself. You watch Senna in the same car and you absolutely knew, you know, you couldn't. I can remember in his first year when he was with Tolman, he had a, a long-term contract and of course, Ayrton being Ayrton, blithely ignored that and, and signed for, uh, for Lotus. Tolman were understandably a bit miffed about this. So they stood him down for the Italian Grand Prix. They punished him. So Atom wasn't driving at Monza, but he did, he did come to the race anyway and spent the weekend with the team. And I wrote a column about it at the time, um, essentially saying I thought Tolman were completely in the right. I knew from the beginning that he wasn't happy. He said at one point, I, I saw you, I read your column, I saw what you said. And then he said, I thought you were a friend. I said, what, what are you saying? I should never write anything critical of you. What the hell kind of a journalist would I be? In fairness, he did eventually, he said, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Frost had been in Formula One for quite a while before, before Ayrton even arrived, and I always got on very well with him. And Senna said, you seem to be very close to Alain. And I said, I said, yes, I got on very well with him. You know, I, 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 I always have done, you know, for, and he said, mm, well, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a problem. That's a problem, that's a problem for me. I mentioned it later in the afternoon to, to Prost. And Prost just said, I always say to people, please, please, by all means, you know, support Ayrton, support Senna, be a Senna fan, but don't hate me. Senna's relationship with the FIA was uh, pretty catatonic. Senna had a particular problem with, with Jean-Marie Ballest, who was the, uh, then the president, and French, like Prost. Senna was convinced, and there's some evidence that he was, he was not wrong on occasion, that Ballest took actions that favoured Prost. He became a complete 
war of words. I had a bad time with Balas. I did the right thing when we crashed at the first chicane, when Prof turned the car over me and he pushed me out. And I won the race and they took that race away from me. And that was not justice. What took place over that winter was when Senna first arrived, he was quiet, relatively mild-mannered, quite gentle. And I think over time, he definitely sort of pulled a, a, a sort of protective shell around himself and, uh, and he became much more, with, uh, much more withdrawn. The making of Senna uh, was when, uh, after Prost had left McLaren and gone to Ferrari, Gerhard Berger came to, uh, to McLaren. Essentially, Gerhard wants to have fun. That's what life was all about. And he really did have a, a, quite an effect on, uh, on Senna. They became close friends. Berger always, always said, Ayrton taught me about uh, how to drive, um, you know, and I, I taught him how to live. Press conference at Suzuka in 91 was, to begin with, a celebration of Senna's latest world championship. But it became more of a, a look back to the race the, the, the previous year. Sanna was on pole position and Prost was qualified second. Pole position at Suzuka had always been on the right. Problem was, he was on the dirty side of the circuit. Sanna had won the year before, starting from the, the dirty side of the circuit. Um, but he was unhappy about it and he wanted it changed and the request was refused and, and Senna always held Ballest responsible for that decision. And, and he, he figured the fact that Ballest wouldn't allow it to be changed, that that was favoring Prost. Ballest give an order and they say, no, 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 we don't change the whole position. And it was an order from Ballest because I know from inside the system. If Sunday, at the start, because I'm in the wrong place, Prost jumped at the start and he gets beating me off the line and the first corner I'm going for it and he better not turn uh, turning ahead of me because he's not gonna make it. And it just happened like this. I really wish it didn't happen. It was not good for me, it was not good for Formula One. I won the championship and so what? The problem with Senna is there were so many days, so many memorable days. I mean, for instance, you know, everybody remembers the, the one and only Grand Prix at Donington in uh, 93 in, in torrential rain. Cross gets away well, so does Hill, so does Schumacher, and Wendlinger is coming up well, Senna is crowded out. I think he was sixth at the first corner uh, and in the lead by the end of the lap. And he just picked everybody off. Ayrton Senna is up to fourth position ahead of Schumacher and challenging Wendlinger as they go round the right-hander into the old hairpin. Senna is up to third. That was one of those laps you can't really quite believe you've, 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 uh, you've witnessed. I've done it, he says. Out comes the fist of victory and Senna has got another 10 world championship points. Another moment, you know, that I think sticks in, uh, in everyone's mind was uh, at Silverstone when, uh, when Senna retired. And Nigel Mansell stops to take his rival Ayrton Senna back to the pits. On the slowing down that, Mansell stopped and uh, picked him up and gave him, a, you know, gave him a ride back. The next race was, I think it was Hockenheim. Ayrton was talking about the, uh, the lift back you know, that he'd had and all the rest of it, and said that as soon as he got to the McLaren pit, the first thing he did was tell the engineers everything he'd read from, uh, from Mansell's dash. When we were at Imola in 1994, you know, 12 years had gone by since there had been a fatality at a Grand Prix. On the Saturday, Roland Ratzenberger crashed in qualifying and he was killed. Sanna was terribly, terribly upset. Professor Watkins had a long, long conversations with Ayrton after Ratzenberger's accident. And he did say to him at one point, Ayrton, I don't think you should race tomorrow, and I think you should think very hard about racing again, ever. That was when Senna said to him, Professor, there are some things we can't change. The race started, and there was an enormous accident at the start. Finally, the race was restarted, with Senna 
I had Schumacher second. And of course, at the start of the next lap at Tamburello, that was where the accident happened. The shock after that weekend was very profound. Having had no fatalities at a Grand Prix for 12 years, suddenly to have two in two days, and one of them being, you know, the racing driver on earth, was, it was, it was shattering. He was without doubt, I think, the most complex man I, I, I ever met in, uh, in racing. And I also think that probably those who seek to deify him, they're selling him short because he was, he was so much more interesting than, you know, a mere deity.